Hi. Today we are going to focus on a short and sweet heart opening sequence. And this will help you feel energized and more open, clear minded, and maybe even more joyful. Not to mention it's going to uh, increase the um, increase a good posture in your body. So let's see what we've got. So I have Valentina already starting the practice using blocks underneath her thoracic spine as well as her head. So we're opening up the upper back. You want to also pay attention as we move through heart openers that um, what we mean is it is a back bending type of, of sequence, but we're focusing on the upper back, not the lower back. So that's why we have this support system so that um, she can restore and relax around the blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can use anything from bolsters to cushions to pillows just to support the upper back. And we're also supporting the back of her head so that the neck doesn't become strained. So the back of the neck, the cervical spine can lengthen. And her palms are splayed up because when the palms are up, the chest can open more. And so in this shape, just starting the practice from a place of opening. And what I like about heart opening is that it, it first of all, it moves me into uh, something new, which can sometimes be scary. And um, I'm also, I feel wide open to receive. So as you're lying here, if, you, if you'd like, if it makes sense to you, if it resonates, can create an intention for your practice. What is it you want to receive through your, through your practice? So we link the mind with the body in yoga. So take a full breath in through your nose. Through your mouth, exhale any stress or tension that you want to get rid of. Yeah, let that go. And let's do two more like that, from the belly all the way up to that heart. And through the mouth. Just releasing. Good. One more full deep breath in. Hold it. And complete breath out. Great work. And then just try to find a smooth breath in and out through your nose. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. And bend your knees and place the soles of your feet on the floor. And you're mindfully going to travel off of the blocks, either to your right or left side, using your arm for leverage. Good. Curling into the fetal position for a few moments here on your side. I'll remove these blocks from underneath you. Good. And from the fetal position, you're going to roll up and come onto your hands and knees facing the front of your mat into a tabletop position. Finding a nice sturdy table with the arms vertical, the hips floating over the knees. As you inhale, arch your back, look up. Good. Exhale, round your spine, look in. Good. Inhale and dip the belly down, the tailbone lifts, shoulders plug in. Exhale, scoop the navel, round. Feel the shoulder blades separate. Now doming the upper spine. Again, inhale, arch back. Pull the chest and the gaze forward and up. And exhale, scoop and round. Come back to neutral spine as you inhale. Walk your hands forward a little bit. Curl the toes. Press back, downward facing dog. And stretch it out. Yep, you can move around a little bit. Just notice how it feels. Really dipping that upper back toward the front of the heart and lengthening the lower back so we don't go into the ribs and the low back. As you inhale, glide forward to plank position. You can use your knees on the floor or not. Exhale, slowly lower all the way down, hugging the elbows in onto your belly. Good. Extend the arms alongside your body, palms face up. Good. That's it. And then release the palms down. Good. As you inhale, lift your head, lift your chest. Good, and then reach the arms up. Yep, so we lift everything up at the same time. Yeah, keep it lifted. Make sure that there's no wrinkles behind your neck. Bring your big toes to touch. Now, if it hurts your lower back to bring your legs all the way together, you can separate them as wide as your hips. Feel the low back lengthening. Feel the upper spine drawing forward toward the sternum. Sides of the neck long, breath deep. You're not punching the glutes. You're just using the low back. One more. Good, exhale, release and turn your cheek to one side. So as you're up, the longer you're up, 
then make sure that you're using that breath to keep you lifted. If I just lift up and hold, it defeats the purpose. You want to always find that nice ujjayi breath. We'll get a little bit of um, an added heart opener for this next variation of Shalabhasana. So bring your forehead to the earth and then interlace your hands behind your low back. If you can't reach, you can always grab a strap or a towel or a piece of clothing. Hugging the shoulder blades together, you're going to inhale, lift the head and the chest up. And I want you to think of lifting the fist away from the seat, but not too much. You're lifting it up and drawing it back simultaneously. Feet stay on the earth. That's it. You press down into the tops of the feet, spread your toes, and use that to lift your head and your chest. Try to keep the wrist nice and straight. Mm-hmm. Nice. Good. Deep breaths. Yeah. One more inhale. And exhale, release, release the arms, turn your cheek to the other side, and if you want, you can rock the hips left and right. Or if you have a friend, you can have your friend do it for you, because it feels better when someone else does it. What I love about um, backbends is that, like I said earlier, the body and the mind are intricately connected. And sometimes doing this stuff can bring up emotions. So it's nice to take rest in between and to stay present with an intention if you set one because like I said you know a, a lot of the times in our day we're sitting in front of the computer we're sitting in a couch we're sitting in a car and there's this consistent forward fold <laughs> in our backs so yoga is the exact opposite of that and because our posture dictates how we feel there may be some gunk from the past or from you know some emotional stuff that gets brought to the surface so if that's the case you know I used to be like I don't like yoga it makes me feel like bad, you know, but now it makes me feel amazing because I got all that out. It's detoxifying, so just don't judge yourself if that's the case. And if not, it's, it's okay too. All right? So we're going to take Dhanurasana, floor bow. Bend your knees, reach back, catch your ankles. If this does not work for you, you can take another variation that we just did. Kick your feet into your hands and lift your hips up. This is great. So you can notice her knees do not splay apart. The tendency is for the knees to open out. Keep them together. You're using those adductor muscles, the inner thighs. Good. You want to balance here. Yep, on the fleshy part of your abdomen, right below your navel. The breathing is deep. And she's literally kicking her feet back. And that's what's extending the arms straight. Make sure, especially if you're a guy, for some reason guys always bend their elbows in this pose. Arms straight. You're kicking your feet into your hands. One more breath. Inhale. And release everything. And you can create a pillow with your elbows, with your forearms, and then turn your cheek to one side if you'd like. Yeah, just rock a little bit. Just getting that stretch in the armpits, keeping that back bend behind the heart. Nice. And then from here, place your hands by your floating ribs, elbows bend, and then lift up uh, into a cobra pose. Yeah, so the shoulders are back, the heart forward. And exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Oof. Downward dog is the most neutralizing shape uh, after the back bends. I don't, I don't recommend uh, going right into a child's pose. Uh, if you think about that, we're doing all this heart opening and then you're going to cave it in again. This is a great way to lengthen and neutralize before uh, going into forward folds. But we're not going into forward folds yet. So drop your knees down to the earth. And then sit up for camel pose on your shins all the way. Good. Place your hands onto your sacrum, fingers point down. And here too, the tailbone drops down, the navel draws in, and the breastbone lifts up as she leans back. This is a great place. You can stay with your hands on your lower back or, as Valentina is doing, bring her hands to her ankles. This space in your low back should stay super, super long. If you feel crunchy crunchies, just back off and touch your lower back instead. The chest is lifting. The belly is just as engaged as if you were doing 700 sit-ups, but not too engaged. Because <laughs> this deep breath, your soft jaw. See, she could smile. So if you could smile and do this at the same time, you're doing it right. <laughs> Good. Then bring your hands back to the lower back. Come all the way up and all the way to straight good hands to the floor tabletop position cross your ankles behind you and then sit back behind your heels extend your legs in front of you and lie down on your back try to prevent hugging your knees into your chest right now just bend your knees and put your feet on the floor 
Good. Press down. Actually, you know what? You can do this. You don't have to do this. I just want to do it for demonstrative purposes, placing the block in between your thighs. Good. Now lift up into bridge pose. So whether or not you have a block doesn't really matter. It's more that you're hugging in, okay? So we stabilize. And this will ensure that you're not uh, going into the low back with unnecessary pressure. So you stay here and breathe. Imagine drawing the heels toward your shoulders energetically so we're opening up those hamstrings. Yeah. The glutes are soft. The chest is lifted. Take one more breath in here. And then slowly articulating through the spine, release all the way down. So you can keep the arms. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Nice. And then remove the block. If you feel like you need to release your low back, all you do is bring the knees to the midline and just stay like that. A few breaths. Hmm. Okay. Do you do wheel pose? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go into wheel. If you do wheel, go into wheel. If you don't do wheel, you do another bridge. So your hands go back. Elbows draw in. Yes. Yeah. So you always want to keep the elbows over the wrists and come all the way up. Good. Yeah. So the feet parallel. Fantastic. In wheel pose. Uh, essentially, you want the bony part of your elbow facing back. Yeah. So there's that external rotation which will maintain space in the thoracic spine. The heart's pointing back. The lower back is nice and long here. The breath out is very important in this posture. Make sure that breath out is steep. Good. And to come out of the pose is very, very important. Pull your chin up to your chest, then bend your elbows and slowly lower your upper, middle, lower back down. That's part of the posture, coming out of it. Now you can hug your knees into your chest. Press your thighs against your torso. Uh, further neutralization of the spine. You could find that in happy baby. So separate your knees and grab the outer edges of your feet. Elbows come inside of the knees. So the hips stay down. So draw your elbows inside of the knee. Yeah, that's it. Great. And draw those knees down. Good. And if you can't get your hips all the way down in this shape, if your hamstrings or your hips are tight, you can always grab behind your thighs as a modification just to lower that down. Good. Hug your knees back into your chest. We'll take a spinal twist now. Both knees drop over to the left side. Extend the arms out and gaze to the right. And breathe into your belly. Breathe into your heart. That's really one of the biggest challenges for me is to take that breath from my belly, pull it all the way up to the heart, and all the way back down again. Good. Come back to center and then over to the other side in your own time. Nice cleansing twist after all this heart opening. And pay attention to how it feels when you leave your mat and you go about the events of your day or your evening um, and how you feel not only physically, but energetically and emotionally as well. Good. Bring your knees back into your chest. Take a big squeeze. And Lift your head and your chest up, curl into a little tiny ball, and release Shavasana. Just let your heart open. And I want you in this Shavasana to sense or visualize that you have that support system underneath your heart again. So the palms splay up in that symbol of receptivity, of opening up. And as you completely relax your physical body, relax your breath body, see if you can imagine as the inhale happens organically, imagine that intention flooding into your heart. And as your body breathes out naturally, imagine any anxieties or stresses or agitations simply floating away. Each breath, see if you can stay with that image, even if it's something different coming in on each inhale, something different exiting on each exhale. And take a few minutes to simply absorb the effects of your practice. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining. Namaste.